The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. A very good morning to all of you who are already logged in to our food security webinar. We are going to wait for another five minutes because there are some attendees that will, are still waiting to get in. It's 11.03 and we are starting our food security webinar. A very good morning to all of you. On behalf of the Embassy and the Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Benelux Council Abu Dhabi and the Netherlands Business Council UAE, a warm welcome to our food security webinar. And a special warm welcome and a very much thank you to Her Excellency Mariam Bint Mohammed Said Hareb Almiri, Minister of State for Food Security, for being with us here today. We are also joined by our ambassador, Mr. Lodi Embrechts, and by our Consul General, Mr. Hans van Day. For those who don't know me, my name is Stephanie Schafskabel. I'm the chairman of the Netherlands Business Council, and next to me is Barbara Farenek, the chair of the Benelux Council in Abu Dhabi. And we are so proud to present you a full agenda highlighting the importance of food security in the UAE and the role the Netherlands is, can and will play in the future of local production and distribution. After the keynote of Her Excellency, our Agriculture Councillor for the Gulf region, Mr. Eric Smit, will do a short introduction on behalf of the Dutch horticulture sector, followed by the CEO of Dutch Greenhouse Delta, Mr. Eric Egbert, will speak on behalf of the key players in the Netherlands. Our webinar and panel discussion will be moderated today by Gas Schellekens, partner, climate change and sustainability at EY. And we can follow this comprehensive panel discussion between Miguel Angel Povedano from Magital Fruitem Retail, Olaf Scholte from Signify, Mr. Karl Wagner from Mother Farms, and Damien Schwarzkachel from Certain. And yes, it's possible to have a schachtschabel and schwarzkachel in one webinar. <laughs> the food security is a very important topic here in the UAE and in the Netherlands. And it's underlined by the number of attendees we have for this webinar. Actually, it's the highest in the history of the Netherlands Business Council. And I, I think also for the Benelux Council to have so many attendees at one of our events. And we also received a lot of questions already by email from many from you. Today's webinar is powered by one of our members. And in the control panel on the right side, you will be able to ask questions. Now, due to the full agenda of today, we will be only able to address a couple of the panel discussions questions. But rest assured, our teams will uh, answer all those questions either by email or you can contact them directly. And, and we will be running a series of webinars on the topics, the Nexus Water, Food and Energy. Talking about our teams, we would like to thank everyone who made today's webinar possible. And especially Fleur Hoog Anting from the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands 
in the UAE who worked really tirelessly to bring you the best possible content that we can give you today. Now, on behalf of myself, on behalf of Barbara, we hope you will enjoy this food security webinar. And it's our honor and our pleasure to hand over to Her Excellency for the keynote speech of today. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Excellency Mariam bin Mohammed Said Hadeb Amiri, Minister of State for Food Security in the UAE. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I hope I have pronounced that correctly. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope everyone is well and safe. And I hope we all get through these unprecedented times healthier and stronger than before. Of course, experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic is a real eye opener for all of us in so many aspects all around the world. And today I want to take the opportunity to shed some light on how COVID-19 has affected us in the UAE and in particular our food security. Now, this is not the first crisis we have experienced. As many of you know, the meaning of food security is ensuring that all citizens and residents of a country have access to safe, sufficient, nutritious food for an active and healthy lifestyle at affordable prices at all times, including emergencies and crises. Now, due to the uh, UAE's climate, we're a water scarce country, we have less than 5% arable land. Um, this doesn't really support uh, crop growing at scale. And so over the years, we have um, built or enhanced our food security by, by building the right infrastructure to become a global hub uh, for food trade. And, and now we are importing 90% of our food uh, not forgetting, we also cater for the over 200 nationalities that live here in the UAE. And so over the years, we have become this global hub of food trade. Um, and having these high dependencies on, um, on many, of the, um, uh, many of the countries bringing food to the UAE has helped us where we are today. So those of you who are living here in the UAE have seen uh, there's almost all kinds of foods from all around the world, uh, you find them on all the shelves here. Now, going through uh, the crisis, uh, it hit us a few weeks time when we started to see a lot of airplanes uh, that, that were grounded. And this was the start of where we could see that we needed to counteract um, what was happening. So we wanted to make sure that this health crisis doesn't turn into a food crisis. Um, as you can all imagine, many of our perishable um, foods come to the UAE by uh, passenger aircraft. And so uh, the airplanes that were halted meant also that certain foods were not coming to, to the UAE. And also with what was happening around the world on a, on a global scale, there were a lot of disruptions in the logistics of uh, food supply. So, just to give you a little bit of a background, I want to go a little bit back in history and uh, come back to where, where we are today. When we experienced some of the crises that we went through, one of the, uh, let's say, most, or like the ones that we really, really learned a, a high lesson in was about 10 years ago when we experienced the, an economic crisis. And because of our high dependency on certain countries for certain food commodities, um, we experienced high price hikes in, for example, wheat and rice. Now, this gave us a bit of a, let's, uh, let's say, a bit of a shake uh, in, in the UAE because it showed us that this dependency was not healthy for us. And so over the years, uh, we have set up uh, national stockpiles for certain food commodities. We have built the Food Security Alliance, which is basically, it's, it's a, it consists of 14 uh, national companies that have invested heavily in agriculture production and supply chains inside and outside of the UAE. Also in 2017, the UAE appointed a Minister of State for Food Security, here with you today, uh, to uh, basically take this file uh, to the next level. Um, with that, my team and I, with all the stakeholders, we developed the National Food Security Strategy, uh, which was approved in 2018. 
And we also uh, established the Emirates Food Security Council, which basically is the vehicle uh, of uh, steering the strategy. Now, with that, uh, we basically had already set the foundation. And when the crisis hit, we started to see um, the passenger aircraft stop, the uh, um, disruptions in the global supply. Uh, I called for an extraordinary meeting for the Emirates Food Security Council, and I was thankful that I had this as a, as a vehicle to communicate. And we started uh, looking in at what was actually happening and what solutions we'd have to start activating um, from the strategy. Now, the strategy is composed of five uh, strategic directions, uh, which is, of course, enhancing agribusiness, um, enhancing food production, enable the technology, um, uh, Im improving uh, food safety and uh, nutrition, uh, um, decreasing food loss and food waste. And the fifth one was all about preparing ourselves for emergencies and crises. So in a way, what we're going through now is testing. Have we put all the right programs in place to be prepared for such a crisis? Now, uh, some of the things we had to uh, start activating uh, when the crisis hit was things like monitoring what's happening on a global scale. Uh, because 90% of the food is coming to the UAE, we needed to understand uh, what is that, what are the bottlenecks that are happening on a global scale? So we started to look into reports such as the Amos report, the global food balance sheet, and we started uh, we activated also the monitoring mechanism to ensure we're looking at on a on a very frequent basis on looking at what foods are coming in on which entry points to to the UAE to understand if we could see some kind of trends. Was there certain foods that were not coming in anymore? Was there a problem in that country? Um, also working with international organizations such as the FAO, um, uh, the World Health Organization as well to look at, and the WTO, to look at what countries have put restrictions. Uh, we were affected by some of these restrictions and we had to sort of quickly work out uh, securing alternative sources and also communicating with our national carriers and our ports to start looking at um, alternative routes and alternative uh, countries from where we could bring certain foods. So we were working very closely through this council with the traders um, and looking at securing these alternative sources. Uh, we also made use of certain uh, repatriation flights. So every time a, a flight would be arranged, we would be alerted about this and then we would be able to tell the traders that they could make use of the space when the plane came back. Um, also, the leadership of the UAE were so generous to also support certain flights as well to ensure that medical and food supplies would be coming. And I think for those of you that are living here in the UAE, what you see is basically what's where, where all your foods available in the shelves. And I think uh, we could say so far so good. Uh, everything has been available all this time. We haven't been seeing any shelves empty. And I think this is a great um, achievement that we've done together with our stakeholders to ensure this. Um, another thing that we started was also uh, an awareness program. We had to, in a way, we're trying to also nudge the, the, um, the people of the UAE not to, not to go over and, and do excessive buying of food, uh, also to take care of the standard food, uh, food safety um, standards. So wash your vegetables and your fruits the same way you would always do. Uh, we also uh, wanted to give a bit more light on local production as well. This is, uh, I always say that in a crisis, um, there are devastating effects, but on the other side, there's also a, a whole bunch of opportunities that arise. And the local producers, this is in a way their golden opportunity to, to gain market access, to showcase that they can bring food quickly and their foods are fresher and also more tastier. Um, and with that, um, we basically, all these things were activated through, through the council and having this communication channel with, with, with them was key. Um, also, you know, over the years, the UAE has built amazing partnerships with other countries such as yourselves um, in, in the Netherlands. And these, these uh, relationships really have helped 
um, going through this, this crisis, the UAE is not just looking at what it's doing nationally, but also how it plays its role as a global player. And um, uh, we've really put a lot of efforts in helping those in need, uh, supporting each other, having this talk now with you to share some of the things we went through. Um, for sure, there were, there were glitches that we went through um, and we had to fix them. There were certain data, which well, there's a lot of gaps in it, which we had to fix as well. So all this was happening in, in the background, but all in all, um, it's been a real eye opener for all of us to actually learn from, from what we have and what foundation we had set and how we could be even better. Um, we want to make sure, as I said in the beginning, we're coming out of this even more resilient than before. And uh, with that, uh, the UAE is going to definitely enhance more on the local food production uh, enabled with technology. And this is where I feel uh, the Dutch could really help. You being uh, one of the smallest countries yet uh, second largest exporter of agriculture in the world really says something on how you have enabled technology uh, in, in, in your systems. And this is in a way what we want to also become for hot regions. And um, uh, this is where I think there could be some great synergies be between us. Uh, we also have realized the uh, food processing sector is also of great importance with any food uh, processing sector, you have uh, you have um, reserves in the country, you have uh, production, um, and you can increase shelf life of certain food commodities as well when they're processed. So yes, we're working now on uh, after COVID-19 plans. The UAE is putting a lot of efforts to ensure that we're um, pushing the economy in the right direction. We're learning from what we've been through we're diversifying uh, from where we're importing food. Uh, we want to invest more also in the country when it comes to uh, food production. And uh, with that, it's, uh, let's say, we've really experienced a, a critical uh, period that has really underscored the importance of strengthening any country's uh, food security. And for us in particular, we've demonstrated how effective our strategy is, how, how effective our communication is with all the stakeholders. And uh, yes, we still have a lot to do. Uh, but as I said, these opportunities arise to make us even more resilient uh, than, than we are now. Um, we've been very proud. Uh, we've seen uh, when you benchmark it against the Global Food Security Index that we've moved 10 spots um, up uh, in the last two years, which was a great achievement uh, for us as a country. Uh, but we do realize uh, we still have lots to do. Um, uh, with saying all this, I think it's also really important that we should not forget the human aspect of what we're going through. Um, many have been really affected uh, on the economical side. Uh, many have lost their jobs. Uh, so the point of not just access of food, but also affordability of food becomes more and more important. And it's something we're also uh, ensuring that we're uh, keeping a close eye on. I also want to take this opportunity to thank, um, yeah, all the frontliners and uh, not just the nurses and the doctors, but also, also those who are working in the supermarkets who are um, uh, delivering food to us. Uh, if, if we don't get food, we won't be able to stay healthy and we won't be able to fight this uh, this this virus so uh, a great uh, thank you to all of them all of them and uh, yeah it's uh, it's acting as one that we can bring this uh, bring an end to this pandemic and uh, i really thank you for for having me today i look forward to receiving your questions and look forward to working closely together with you too on how we can take us to the next level of uh, more resilient food systems and uh, a more food secure uh, world. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your inspirational words and for your vision and also for thanking all the frontliners. Um, we do believe that the UAE will come out much stronger from this crisis and that uh, the opportunities that are arising 
that we could strengthen also our cooperation. Thank you again from our hearts. Like it's Mother's Day thank in the Netherlands. And like we <laughs> thank you all for being with us here. Thank you. Thank you so much and happy Mother's Day again. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Then I will hand over now the floor to our moderator. I'm still very inspired by the words we just heard. Um, Mr. Gus Gellekens is the partner of Climate Change and Sustainability at EY, and he will moderate the session. Thank you, Gus, for being with us here today. Thank you, Stephanie, and uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone uh, on the webinar. Um, glad you joined us uh, today. Um, Stephanie uh, mentioned earlier, um, we have a couple of uh, short um, uh, speeches from uh, Eric and Eric uh, before we join the panel discussion. So without further ado, if I can introduce Eric Schmidt, please, uh, Agricultural Councillor for the Gulf region. Over to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Gus. Good morning, uh, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honest, Your Excellency, that you are joining this webinar and to take the opportunity to thank you once more for your kind support in our continuous cooperation. I know you already know quite a lot about what the Netherlands can offer. Like you said yourself, we are the second exporter worldwide on agriculture. But with a changing situation due to the COVID-19 crisis, is a good moment to exchange views again. Although the main focus of today's panel discussion is on horticulture, or better to say, on indoor farming, what you, uh, well, about what we will hear a lot later on. I also want to highlight all the sectors in which the Netherlands is involved in food security in the UAE at the moment. First of all, fruit and vegetables. Like you said, we also experienced some export problems uh, at the moment the crisis started. But during the crisis, we realized that the export of fruit and vegetables from the Netherlands to the UAE uh, even was rising. I hope the Netherlands is a trustful partner that does not disappoint you. Another uh, other things uh, in which we are good is uh, dairy milk and milk, pro uh, milk uh, products like cheese, yogurt, uh, yogurts, drink yogurts, etc. You probably know about uh, Rainbow. Abukos. You know it's a Dutch brand, just like uh, some of the cheese uh, you find in the supermarkets, the infant formula for the children, everything coming from the Netherlands, and you find it all over the UAE. Meat export, uh, and especially uh, veal, but also hatching eggs, equipment, and feed for the poultry industry, sperm for the dairy industry, and some more, is coming from the Netherlands. This means that we are really already heavily involved in local production in the UAE and just bring all the propagation materials which can help you. Ingredients for end products, like bakeries for instance, or restaurants or for hotel chains, you also can find uh, which are coming from the Netherlands. High-tech solutions in aquaculture, open field production, uh, desalinization, meat production, and of course, horticulture, uh, you can find in the Netherlands, but that you already know because you even mentioned it in your speech before. And now we are at the right sheet, I see, where the Netherlands is present in the UAE. Like I stated earlier, we are the second largest expo uh, exporter worldwide, a big, exporter, uh, a big supporter and exporter of all kinds of food uh, as well as export, as production in the UAE. Harvesting machinery, even for days production, and of course, horticulture. Some of our companies are already for decades present in the UAE. The Netherlands is also producing in the UAE is willing and is willing to improve this. We are a knowledge provider and are happy to increase this. The policy of my minister is, it is best to produce close to the markets and not to ship the end products all over the world. 
Dutch companies are most willing to cooperate, not only in producing locally by themselves, but also as operators by consultancy, BOT constructions or BOO constructions. But like I said, also by investing themselves. Now going back to horticulture, about which we will hear also more later on from Erik Egbers. The Netherlands can offer high-tech greenhouses, but also middle-tech and low-tech. Middle-tech is often still more economically viable on a short time, in a short term in the old region. But in the long run, of course, high-tech is better. But as, as I said, the next speaker, Eric Egberts from Dutch Greenhouse Delta, will probably tell more about uh, will tell, probably tell more about this. Then for the vertical horticulture. The two companies in the panel discussion are the real specialists on this. So I think we will hear from them more about this. And as they are there, you know, the first project already started in UAE. Then the seed companies. The ministry, uh, no, sorry, the majority of the biggest seed companies uh, in the world are Dutch. They are coming from the Netherlands and we are proud of this. Then biological, non-biological control. You know there are three companies in the world which are great in biological control, but there's only one which is the best. And that one is coming from the Netherlands again. So more or less, you can see, you can help in all these kinds of uh, things uh, and are already active in the UAE. But let's, go, let's come back to horticulture. Of course, the stories you will hear are just from some Dutch companies, although Dutch Greenhouse Delta represents quite a few, but the Netherlands has more, which you excellently, hopefully, will meet later this year at GFIA in Abu Dhabi or Green Tech in Amsterdam, with exhibitions also welcome everyone joining this webinar. By the way, Your Excellency, we are very happy that you, inshallah, will join Green Tech later this year even though open it. Today, however, we already can listen to success story on UAE Netherlands cooperation in horticultural production in the UAE. Thank you very much. Eric, thank you. Thank you for the oversight of uh, how Holland uh, is already active in the region and also what Holland can offer. Um, to continue on that theme, I'd like to hand over to Eric Egberts now. Eric, over to you, please. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Excellency, the Minister, and all the all other guests here at this webinar. My name is Erik Egberts. I'm the CEO of Dutch Greenhouse Delta, an international platform with state-of-the-art partners in the horticulture industry here in Holland. We can provide the knowledge and sustainable solutions for the growth and production of fresh, healthy, and safe food worldwide. Our partners are with us today as well. I would first like to express my gratitude to the Netherlands Embassy and the Consulate General in the UAE, the Benelux Council, and the Netherlands Business Council for the opportunity to speak at this webinar. Please turn the page. The world is facing a lot of challenges regarding food security, food safety, especially in this current time during the COVID-19 crisis. People's health is highly important and many countries are relying on others to secure the food production as Her Excellency has pointed out in her keynote, the UAE is facing similar changes. Challenges. Challenges like food production is important. More than 90% is coming from abroad from the UAE. Little arable land. And during the crisis and emergencies, the food supply is disrupted. And the UAE did a big effort to keep going with the food supply from abroad. And it's good for her that they continue. Especially during the crisis that has such an impact on our health, 
consumers demand for food is big and the food demand at consumers is fresh safe healthy and varied food fresh from the stores no additives safe meaning free from contamination and diseases healthy of course pure fresh with good nutrients and for right consumers want choices and local of course when you produce local around the corner your fruit your your food is more fresh and have more nutrients than when you ship it from abroad please can you turn the slide I'm understanding that the UAE, there was a huge raise in demand for oranges because it contains so many vitamin C. People are now increasingly aware that they have to build up the resistance. Please, can you turn to the next slides? Then it comes up. Yeah, there we have the words that I just used. So people are more aware about the role of food in their life. And in Holland, that was already mentioned by the uh, by Her Excellency, the Netherlands is one of the largest food exporters of the world. And not only food, but also seeds. Our technology and knowledge in this industry are world famous. It's a unique achievement for a small country densely populated also. The Netherlands is the world champion in horticulture by square meter, thanks to a unique ecosystem of growers, suppliers, greenhouse builders, installers, seed breeders, research institutes and universities. And from my heart, I can say that most of those companies are family owned. What is a big achievement for a smith, a, such a small country to have so many family business who stay in line every day to keep going and finding new innovative solutions. For centuries, we have working together in cooperatives or other collaborations to bring food production to a higher level. I think the Dutch have found the word cooperative. You can see it today in the large cooperatives in the dairy, in the flour industry, but also the Dutch bank, the Rabobank, is a cooperative. Cooperatives are in our heart every day. I come back on the cooperative later. However, in order to tackle the problems facing the world, we need, um, we need to join forces with our partners of the futures. We, as a Dutch Greenhouse Delta, would like to explore with the United Emirates how centuries of the Dutch knowledge and chain approach can support the country's vision to achieve the goals and to deliver fresh and healthy food. With our partners, who represent the entire food chain, we offer solutions to make food production in the UAE sustainable from fork to farm with retail and consumers needs at a starting point. We translate this into sustainable production, facilities and logistic implementation because it all starts at the consumer side. If we can bring good food to the consumer and we know what they want, we can to set up the best solutions to produce it. And we do that with our knowledge. And it is our aim at making the most efficient use of raw materials, water, energy, and with the highest possible yield, of course. Growing fresh, safe, and affordable and healthy food with nutrients that can contribute to a healthy lifestyle. And that point that was made by Her Excellency on affordable is what we find in many countries around the globe. In any case, what this crisis has taught is that health comes first, that obesity, diabetes, and heart problems 
are a major risk factors and can largely be prevented with a healthy lifestyle. The Sustainable Development Goals, good health and well-being is one of our key drivers. We believe it's also highly important that all the citizens, whatever their nationality, also in the UAE, need to have access to good and healthy food. Your Excellency, distinguished guest, that brings me to the Sustainable Development Goal number eight. Decent work and economic growth. Working on the food supply chain is something where you make a difference, where you are great value in carrying the presence and the future generation. Yes, this is the right slide, thank you. And future generation. Whether it is a sustainable greenhouse, an indoor farm, or a coal chain, the sector provides high quality jobs. Whether you work with robotics, artificial intelligence, or fields of research, it's rewarding work in a robust system for highly and practical education for people, for men and women, for young and old, year round. It is nice to work in the horticulture industry. And I'm doing that already for more than 25 years. Coming from a farmer home, I'm still working in the horticulture industry. And I'm proud to do that because it's nice work. It's international and very, very high level artificial. So we have to bring that to the youngest people, also in the UAE, that working in horticulture is good, gives you a good living. I want to go to slide number seven, please. People need to live in a sustainable cities and communities. Making cities sustainable means creating careers and business opportunities, as I mentioned. Safe and affordable housing and building resilient societies and economies, but also about resilience. Cities and communities need to rely on resilient food systems and an open infrastructure that is based on cooperation. In those food systems, we must take sustainable production into account, especially in order to keep those cities livable when it comes to clear air, energy, and challenges of water use. Here in Holland, we live with water. We have enough water, but still we have to take care of it and we are used to do that also around the globe. We would like to help the United Arab Emirates to ensure sustainable consumption and production. What footprint per capita does the UEA for when it comes to natural resources? Let's work together and find answers and bring the best solutions. Slide number nine, please. Your Excellency, I would like to address my last words of my speech to you personally. We met before very briefly about the Sustainable Development Week earlier this year. At this time, I think we had no idea what was ahead of us. And you just mentioned it's a hard time. But you see a lot of opportunities, and I, in your words, I hear a lot of courage, and I see a lot of uh, brave to, to come over those very difficult times. Our horticulture industry would be honored to work with you, and the Food Security Alliance, which you mentioned again. We would like to partner with them when it comes to the UAE goals and ambitions. And of course, all the opportunities to produce fresh, tastier and nutritious food. The this proposition consists of sports technology, but I think the most what we can bring is human capital and humanity, knowledge and services. Thank you very much for having us today in this webinar. And I'm looking forward on behalf of my team to take further steps together in the near future. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.
Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, to Her Excellency for her insight and um, information about the, the context for the UAE and the progress that's been made. And then secondly, to Eric and Eric for, for your uh, contribution as well. Um, what I'd like to do now is to uh, ask my panelists to join me uh, on, on screen. Um, if, if I could ask uh, Miguel Angel Vedano, uh, Kyle Wagner, Damien Schwarzkachel, and Olaf Schulte, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we have had a very good introduction to the challenges that we're currently facing, uh, not just in the U UAE, but also globally. Um, we've heard about the progress and the planning that the UAE has undertaken to make sure it's prepared for the challenges that we face at the moment. Um, there's also opportunities, I think, lie ahead. If anything, um, what the pandemic has done is, I think, slowed a lot of us down. We're not rushing around as quickly as we were before. We have time to look at things. We have time to uh, assess and perhaps change the way we, we do some things. What I'd like to do with uh, you this morning is to explore both the challenges and the opportunities around food security um, for the UAE, also internationally. And perhaps I could ask um, each of you in turn uh, to briefly say who you are um, and what part, what role you play in the food production uh, chain. If I could start with Miguel, please. Yeah, good morning, Head Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Gus, thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve with my uh, college this uh, productive time to highlight the food uh, security, what we are doing. So the first thing that I want to highlight is like COVID-19 times was um, a very interesting times that highlight, um, like Her Excellency highlight before, what is the dependency that we have in UAE linked with the multiple nationalities that we have, because we have more than 200 nationalities. That is one very, very fair point that we need to keep in consideration because when we start to make sourcing, when we start to create one assortment portfolio, the first thing is thinking in customer. And now we have more advanced analytics and algorithms that can make the prediction what the customer is looking for. And like Eric repeat before, some common patterns are coming in this time for, for the different part of the world, even in UAE. Like today, the, the food security sustainability values is more and more important for our customer. We had the proof in our own algorithm because as you know, in Majital Putain and Retail Carrefour, we have more than 88 million customers per year. <laughs> and that is something that has happened before the people thinking we are what we eat and not the people thinking we are what they eat. So the localization versus international need is very important. And in the diversity of the countries that we have in Majital Putain, that we are present in more than 16 countries, the dependency from the local agriculture is pretty different. For example, in UAE, the local uh, agriculture represents 20% in the total procurement. Why? Because one of the things is like we have 200 nationalities. However, if you go in other countries like Egypt or Saudi, it's 60, 70% the local industry. One of the major challenges that I find in these COVID-19 times was linked with the supply chain. The visibility that Eric highlighted before to then end-to-end -end value chains in supply chain is key for the future in front of this kind of pandemic that have less dependency for the import. At the same time, then of course, we can do more production with international suppliers and apply the highest standards in quality than we have in UAE, because UAE at country's level, standard than we have in quality is at the level of Europe. So to develop the local industry in this direction, in my point of view, is some key word that I want to highlight, that is the tech. Tech solution and comparison between government, retailers, and far. When the tech will be key. And one example is what we are doing in Majital Putain, linked with hydroponic solution. Hydroponic solution is only the beginning, but you can generate the big production with 90% less square meters than you have in one traditional farm and 90% less resources like water. All these kind of, of solution in countries like the weather is very complicated factor in summer. 
is key to find solution and have less dependencies. That is the, 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 the global thing that I want to share with you. And into the supply chain solution in the fruit and veg market, it's extremely important to what will be your supply chain, what will be your distribution center, because the different kind of product need different temperatures. And to guarantee the right delivery to our customer, we need to be very fair in all that. So I know that after our, our college will discuss more in how we can do, and I will have more, more ideas and possible solution for, for all of you. But of course, supply chain is one of them. And our objective in UAE is to pass the 20% local production to 50, 60% in the next five years. And for that, we are working very near to the government, extremely near. The government introduced to us in the next, in the last uh, uh, month and a half, more than 500, 600 uh, small and medium companies uh, uh, from UAE. And uh, with them, I can tell you that in the last two months, our growth in the local production is growing the 65%. So it's possible, my answer is yes. Is necessary? My answer is yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kyle, if I can turn to you for just a quick introduction and to say uh, where you're involved in the, the construction process. Sure. Good morning, good afternoon to all who join us today. And big thank you as well to the Dutch Embassy and Her Excellency for joining us on this webinar. Um, I'm quite happy to hear what Miguel was mentioning about the need for the urgent uh, local suppliers because that's exactly where Madara Farms fits in. So I'm the head of operations for a fairly young company here. We were founded about three years ago. We're an ag tech company. In other words, we are modern farmers. That's something very exciting for us because we do believe that farming in the UAE does require modern technology to make it both commercially viable and more sustainable, considering uh, not just food security, but also water security challenges. In fact, our company was actually founded by a local partner based on the urgent and important need for addressing the water security challenges here. So to address that, we're primarily using controlled environment agriculture. In other words, growing indoor farming with vertical systems as well, which minimizes our need for water in this very harsh environment. Perfect, thank you. Um, Damien, can I turn to you? Sure, uh, thank you. Well, good morning everybody at this Mother's Day and uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, webinar and this discussion. Thank you for all the introductions made by Her Excellency, the counselors and also the other att attendees today. Um, so, uh, my name is Damien Swartzkogel. I'm a representative for CERTON, responsible for the Middle East uh, region for our activities. Um, we're proud to be a, a supplier of uh, Mother Farms with our uh, technology and solutions. And I think we're more than just supplier, but we see ourselves as a partner and uh, for especially like long-term success. That's uh, how we like to think about uh, our market development. Um, and with, with that perspective, we always like to understand first the market uh, challenges and uh, needs before we start developing and implementing solutions into the market. Now, Certon has a long history uh, as a company. We're a Dutch company, a family company uh, uh, established over 123 years ago. Um, and we've been around the world with different horticulture solutions. So from a standard glass greenhouse, which is suitable in a climate like Holland, but in the meantime, developed many different uh, solutions also for, for instance, uh, hot climates as California, and in the last years, uh, also in the UAE. Uh, Pure Harvest was one of the first high-tech uh, projects we developed in the UAE, um, mainly because of the, say, the awareness and the momentum that Her Excellency with the food security team um, um, made and created and we see that that success uh, has a good spin-off uh, and the next uh, uh, another example so not a glass greenhouse but a fully indoor farm uh, will be uh, the mother farms uh, uh, facility which will be developing much more closer orientated to the city and to industrial area uh, as it's more power uh, uh, intensive but on the same side even more scarce with uh, our water resources and optimum in the efficiency of use of production. So in, in Holland, we sometimes say, uh, we try to give more crop for every drop of water we give. And that's basically what we, uh, we try to do and we keep developing with uh, the technology. And then last, last comment to 
uh, to our position in the technology side, uh, we try to uh, innovate uh, very strongly and develop the indoor farming uh, technology sector uh, to the next level. Uh, that means that we don't just stop by uh, implementing the production how we know it into a more technical and mod more modern facility, but we are also looking very strongly to innovate the systems, how we grow the plants. Um, and this is mainly with the purpose to even more uh, increase the production mm -hmm. level, but also to find different ways of, uh, that's something Miguel also pointed out, to, to uh, a more lean production of produce, to collect more data, to be more predictable to what crops are being produced and harvested to make them accessible to the market. And that can really spin off into the supply chain uh, for uh, the decrease of uh, uh, waste of food and spilling also food in the supply chain. Um, well, as a short introduction, I think that's basically where we're uh, at and what we are focusing uh, on. As certain. Thank you, Damien. Thank you very much. Um, I noticed a restaurant in Amsterdam had recently ordered a lot of glass greenhouses as well. I set them up around tables so that people could still go out and enjoy a meal closed in their own personal glass greenhouse. So perhaps that's a new market for you, still related to food, but uh, perhaps not something you're focusing on at the moment. <laughs> no, not, not yet, but it looked okay. very fancy. Okay. <laughs> Olaf, uh, over to you, please. Just a, a short introduction, please. I'm looking at the clock. We've only got a little bit of time. I would like to get one or two questions and to get your views on that as well. Uh, Olaf, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you, Gus, and uh, thank you for having me in this uh, in this webinar. So I work for Signify, uh, the world leader in lighting. Uh, we used to be Philips Lighting. Um, we've been in the country already for uh, many years, but uh, since recent times also focusing on the agriculture sector. Uh, that is um, uh, animal lighting for poultry, uh, fish farms lighting, but also horticulture. And um, with all these modern technologies uh, that we have nowadays, it's possible also in more difficult countries like the UAE to grow food, eh, like Kyle and uh, Damien were already uh, explaining. And we as a lighting supplier can uh, contribute, uh, I think, heavily to this, because if you grow without daylight, it means you need artificial light. Uh, we do a lot of research to that in our own uh, vertical farm in the Netherlands, and we're trying to apply that knowledge uh, together with, with our partners uh, to make sure that we uh, create an optimal uh, lighting solution. Uh, we think that um, uh, producing locally can uh, can really uh, have a lot of benefits and uh, we're trying also to help to develop that market not only by working together with uh, uh, the farms but also with uh, research institutes and universities and support them with their research in order to uh, gain more knowledge about how to make this work in the, in the region. Perfect. Thank you, Olaf. Um, I have a couple of questions. The first one I'd like to direct to Miguel and Kyle. Um, and if you could keep your answers sort of fairly brief, maybe 30 seconds, a minute or something like that, um, because we'd, I'd like to keep things moving. But the question to both of you is, um, what do you see as the current challenges in the process from farm to shelf? How has that changed or been made more complicated as a result of the pandemic situation in the last couple of months? Miguel, if I could start with you, please. So, can, did you, can, can you start? Because I, I didn't well understand the, the question. The song was not very good. Okay, sorry. The question was, um, from where you are sitting, what do you think the current challenges are in the process of okay. getting food from the farm to the shelf, um, particularly in terms of quality, price, supply and how has that changed or become more difficult what are you doing to address that okay so thank you for the question Gus. so the major challenge that i that i find in many of our countries for for guarantee that the local source in agriculture will be a, a, a real resource for all of us is linked with the complexity for the weather the highest standards quality that we keep in countries like Qatar or UAE in the way that really the efficiency 
for the for the new tech and the products be at the level of the international standards that mm -hmm. is one of the things that i detect because for example in uae specifically we have um, a lot of solution with the new tech for the beige but for fruit is much more complicated we have for a strawberry we find solution for many of the other fruit is not yet here and in many of the cases we are pretty good and very efficient and very uh, um, competitive in the entry prices however we need to escalate link with the customer expectation about organic bio solution etc we need to escalate the step by step and give really training that i think one of my colleagues i think demian and olaf before highlight made training to the people in the farms to guarantee that the standards will grow at the level of the international retailers we need to have i think that is one of the key things the second thing is the new tech link with the few resources that we have like water dependency and all this kind of thing if we find solution for that and we continue to to working together government tech companies and retailers for go much more directly in vertical organization with the farm with much more um how i say that in polite way we need even the retailers to be very fair with the farm in the way that when we go with them we need to have much more facilities no contract like international than we have contract condition for one year with this kind of farm we need to sign contract for three five years and compromise the production together that is the right way that the people invest in tech and the tech amortization will happen because one thing be, uh, behind all that is that we are business we need to achieve the efficiency for the roi not be degraded for the different stakeholders that is my my view. Okay, perfect. Kyle, I'm interested in your view. You're obviously a, a local producer. How do, how do you see things, and what what have the challenges been? Yeah, so during this uh, recent crisis, I think one of the biggest challenges for us was the shift in consumer preferences because actually the behaviors were interrupted. Uh, whereas clearly we were more aligned with the uh, F and B in the restaurant business before that uh, demand side basically evaporated overnight, which was a major challenge for us and a lot of many local growers. So for us, the challenge was really uh, was maintaining uh, the farm to fork principle is the forks change location, we can say, right? But we're working through that now, and that's actually going to strengthen us going forward because as we scale up, we'll be able to reach more customers, more be more diversified in terms of our risk. I think one of the key things to bring up here again is that in this pandemic, the UAE had the foresight and the vision to put some long-term plans in place. And what that meant was that the distribution side for us was not drastically interrupted. Um, of the many critical sectors who were exempted from the earlier kind of lockdown effects, agriculture was one of those. So we were able to keep our supply chain operating on the outbound side, the inbound side, et cetera. So that's a really, again, a key strength the UAE government supported us on that as well. And finally, because we're growing in a controlled environment, the hygiene practices for us basically went on more or less unchanged. We didn't have to suddenly implement sanitization procedures, hygiene protocols, because these things are fundamental when you start talking about growing indoors in a CEA environment. That's great. Thank you, Kyle. I mean, it's it's nice to hear what's happening behind the scenes. For most of us, we show up in the supermarket and the food is there, but we don't really understand the story behind the food sometimes. Um, Damien and Olaf, I'd like to turn to you and, and with a particular focus on, on knowledge and technology that Holland has built up over many, many decades around food production. Um, what, what, what else can technology do? And how far can technology go to really help Deal with some of the challenges that we're facing in the pandemic situation at the moment. Um, Amy, if I can start with you, please. Yeah, um, I, I think the technology uh, um, helps us, uh, say, making the food production less vulnerable to interruptions. So basically, what we've been looking for the last years on developing is to put in place year-round production systems that really can produce uh, top quality produce anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter whether you're on the North Pole, but fortunately there's no consumers there. But uh, for instance, in harsh climates like the UAE, there's a large consumer demand, uh, like Miguel mentioned, with a high quality standard. Uh, so we need to be able to supply the, say, Western European style of uh, quality level uh, from uh, local sources. So that's, uh, say, the basic technology. I think the next step, uh, of the, what technology will 
uh, enable uh, will diversify in two directions. One direction is the advancement of knowledge on how to grow and also how to steer plants and fruits in improvement of nutrients um, and also yields. Um, and second uh, direction is the, uh, the less uh, dependency from labor. So implementing more robotization uh, into the crops. Uh, we recently uh, joined uh, at a joint venture with uh, a Japanese company that comes from uh, Denso, it's called. It comes from the auto industry. So we're implementing uh, robotization uh, from other industries into horticulture uh, with rapid paste now to be able to, for instance, uh, pick tomatoes in the future mother farm facility uh, with minimal labor resources. And that makes also the food production less vulnerable to, say, an example as the crisis that we have now. Yes, uh, it's an extremely important point. Where I sit in the UK, of course, the UK is suffering from um, sort of local um, laborers who come in the fruit at the moment. So there's a big worry with farmers at the moment that a lot of their crop will just be wasted in the fields because it can't be picked. Um, Luff, over to you. Um, what can technology bring? How far can you know, lighting and um, the technology around lighting help in, in the current situation and going forward? Lighting has uh, been going through a breakthrough in terms of efficiency in the past, uh, let's say, 10 years uh, with the introduction of LED technology. I think especially growing in multi-layers uh, requires a very efficient solution to reduce the addition of heat in a farm uh, because that, uh, that helps then, of course, climate control. Uh, so we're continuously working to optimize on the, the spectrum uh, to, uh, to develop uh, better crops and reduce the energy consumption. Uh, next to that, I think uh, it's important uh, not only look at uh, technology, but also look at the knowledge of people. Uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, now that you're going into an area era where there's a lot of high tech uh, developments in farms going on, which makes it capital intensive. We need to make sure that uh, we're optimizing the use of that and really uh, make the investments uh, pay off their, uh, their money. So um, I think that's another element that we, that we have to take into account. Yes, no, I, th I think at the end of the day, of course, all these areas are, are interrelated um, and it's about the efficient functioning of those. Um, just looking at the clock, we have a few more minutes, so um, and then we need to wrap up. I will ask one more question um, of each of you in turn, and then I'll hand it back to Stephanie. Um, so we, we've heard a little bit earlier from Her Excellency about uh, the desire to increase local production. Um, and at the moment, the UAE, of course, has got a very diversified strategy that makes sure that it can obtain the, the amounts and types and quality uh, and quantity of food that it requires, but of course, increasing local production would be a, a, a longer term um, outcome that, that is preferable, I guess, to having to import everything and be dependent on longer supply chains. Um, I'd be interested to hear from you what your thoughts on on are, are on how far the UAE can go in terms of local production. What do you see as a sort of maximum? What would it, what types of food groups could it cover? Um, and then as a Second part of that question, what do you, what changes or what other things do you think are needed in the UAE business environment that would really allow you to make that progress to achieve that outcome? If I can start with you again, Miguel. Yeah, thank you for the question. So how far can, uh, can, uh, can go? I know sure goes, but I can tell you very concrete what is our plans. Our plans in Magital Putain Retail is to grow in UAE the local production from 20% today to 60% in the next five years. Internet challenge. And that is based in the in the pattern than what is the behavior. So in our value crazy the right answer for all the different nationalities. Into that, we have released some production that can cover 50-55% of the customer needs today. For that, that we need is continue with the 
wonderful initiative that the uh, food security uh, is doing today through the the SNC and all the the, the different stakeholders in the way that the cooperation between government retailers and farmers of course take us into that is more solid than ever with more transparency than ever that is extremely important if we want to achieve this objective and into that to really understand what is the customer um, purchase behavior and for that we can be very solid partner one example on that and i want to send it with all of you is with the COVID-19, one of the major changes in the customer purchase behavior linked with fruit and veg. It's like before the people in traditional way in this country is choice the product unit by unit and after you sold by KG. Now was a pattern that was going much more like the consumption in Europe in uh, prepack because it's less touching for the people. So all this kind of predictability, all this kind of visibility make that the value proposal that we will create with the local industry will be much more strong. Another point that was happened that made that the local dependency should be higher is like when the pattern coming with the COVID-19 consequence, for me the recollection in many of the production countries like Europe or US was not possible the mobility for workers for one part of the world like South America or other countries to these industrial countries. So the production was dropped the 35, 45%. And the consequences happen. So we need to have less dependency from the import, not only in the agriculture, even we need to minimize the potential impact in some of the product like rice, flour, oil, etc. So local production is possible, and we have a big societal responsibility to, to make that. And Magital Futain is behind and collaborate very near with the government in that. Thank you. That sounds great. Thank you, Miguel. Kyle, if I can turn to you, please. Sure. So I'm pretty excited about this, because if we think about where we are today, again, going back to the vision and leadership of the country, a number of the challenges to scaling up quickly have already been knocked over. From a regulatory point of view, for example, Last year, the Abu Dhabi municipality's release was called the Advanced Agricultural Trade License, for which we're one of the first recipients of that. And it's a dedicated new trade license specifically to facilitate companies like ourselves getting up and running uh, much more quickly and with access to the correct level of government support. Um, beyond that, what we have to think about is in terms of scaling up, it becomes to me a question of economics or commercial viability. Um, Her Excellency mentioned the word affordability, that's how the consumer sees that side of the equation. So for us to grow up here, Quickly, what does that need? Well, I think we need some economies of scale. If we look at the Dutch model, for example, they have such economies of scale because they're simply at that level of implementation. They're maybe 15, 20 years ahead of where the UAE will eventually get to. So for us, as a very small farm, for example, I can say that to get access to high quality inputs for my crops, most likely today I'm going to be importing them. But if in the future, as we're growing and other future farms are growing here as well, suddenly these import costs drop as the economies of scale give a benefit to all of us and that kind of rising tide lifts all boats scenario starts to take effect. So for me, it's kind of one of those like self-fulfilling prophecies. If we say this is a target and we're making these investments, which these investments are going to be facilitated by the government through such vehicles such as ADIO, that's the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, is a Gadan 21 initiative, for example. So the funding is there, the regulatory framework is there. I think the last piece of this equation for me is addressing a bit of consumer preferences. Again, in this local, in this kind of pandemic we're facing now, Consumers, to some degree, have been forced to look more at local production. And I think what they're seeing is they're being pleasantly surprised at the good quality that can be produced in a high quality system here. I think we have to change those consumer preferences um, and stop relying so much on imports that we're used to, for those of us that are Western experts, and start relying more on that local production. And again, we'll start scaling this up much more quickly. Yes, great. Thank you very much. Um, just some important points there, I think. Um, Damien, over to you. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think there's a great future. Uh, if I look back to where Holland was 70 years ago after the World War and we said uh, no more hunger uh, and what we developed uh, as an industry. Um, but I think that's the key there, that you need to develop a whole industry because uh, it can only be as good as the, say, the weakest link. So it, it means not only focusing on the production, but also on the starting materials, uh, uh, propagation of good young plant material. Um, and that's not necessarily only into the crops we mainly focus at for our facilities, but also for other crops that are grown uh, outdoor in the season. So I think that's a, a big step. 
The second on the other side is a recognition of the produce, produce how, it's, uh, how it's produced, so in what kind of development, uh, what kind of technology is produced and how that's recognized into the market by consumers so that they can recognize what value this product has in terms of freshness, uh, it's local, uh, the, the nutrients that are related with it and how uh, scarce it has been with using the resources of the country. Uh, I know there's discussion from the Food Security Council to set up some kind of label to recognize that for consumers, but I think that would also be helpful from the market side to stimulate it. Um, yeah, and I think uh, lastly is uh, cooperation within the industry. I think it's a, a big topic. We, we as Certon supply uh, yeah, one portion of the solution, but we're not alone. We can bring in a lot of uh, partners and relations from Holland, but I think we also need to enhance the, what is already available within the UE and how can we say upgrade uh, that type of level and knowledge uh, to, a, to a next level. So, yeah, I'm positive perfect. to the future, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Olaf, what are your thoughts? Well, I have to say that I uh, largely agree with was, what was said. I think if people like Kyle and uh, Miguel are happy uh, with how the situation is in the country and if the attention points can be addressed, that's also good for us. And I think that's also good for the customer. Uh, I think uh, customer preference uh, to local production will come by itself once uh, there is more and more local produce with high quality available. And uh, yeah, it's just up to us to provide uh, the farms with the right lighting solutions uh, to make that all happen. And uh, I would like to take the opportunity also to mention that uh, on May 20th, we will do a dedicated webinar on lighting for uh, horticulture in vertical farms. So if you're interested to join that one, please contact me on LinkedIn or leave a question here in the, in the comments. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, we are sadly coming to the end of our time. In fact, we've overrun slightly. Uh, we could talk for hours. It's a subject that I think um, we, we could all do with understanding more about. Um, we've heard some interesting um, feedback from, from my panelists, both in terms of their views on uh, what's needed to scale up uh, local food production. I agree completely. Economies of scale, something that Holland has done for, for years, and I think we're seeing the benefits of now. Um, interesting point around packaging. I mean, I noticed that in my own behavior when I go shopping as well, that I don't use the loose fruit and veg anymore. I go for the packaged one. Um, developing the whole industry, I think, is a very, very important point. Um, and it's difficult, of course, particularly when you take your first step because you don't have everything in place yet. You need to design it so that you do have the whole industry in place by, by the end of the program. Um, and then I think labeling point, too many of us just buy what we see, having a label that really says where something is from, how it's produced, um, more detailed labeling, I think, educate um, both the customer, um, but also, I guess, knowledge more broadly across the industry itself, um, whether it's energy efficiency, um, being more conservative with water, using the right technology, all of these things. I think the answers are out there. It's up to all of us uh, in terms of how we pull this together. Um, I'd like to thank all my panelists for their time and their input. Uh, Miguel, thank you very much. Kyle, thank you. Damien, thank you. And Olaf, thank you. With that, hand it back to Stephanie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear panelists, for joining your, uh, the, the webinar and also sharing your vision. And, and thank you, Gus, for moderating this interesting panel discussion. Uh, we received a lot of questions and we will make sure that all those questions will be addressed. And, uh, but it's important to highlight the contact details of the Netherlands Business Council, the Benelux Business Council and the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, as well as the Consulate General. So this topic is a topic that is in our minds and in our hearts. So we would be very keen to be in touch with you and answer all the questions that you might have. Um, that leaves me to say that we're sorry that we're 15 minutes over time, but I hope that you all enjoyed this food security webinar. Again, a big thank you to Her Excellency for joining us today and sharing your vision. Like we got a lot of uh, compliments, uh, Your Excellency. Thank you again very, very much. 
um, like we will be working tirelessly to to strengthen the relationship between the UAE and the Netherlands. And uh, your your words have been heard by our Dutch business community today. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. It was a great session. It was great to hear all the insights of all the panelists. And I don't know if some of you have heard, we're now working on developing ag tech in the UAE. So we'll definitely be reaching out to all of those that were there and gave us the insights. So thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. And bye-bye to the entire Dutch business community in the UAE. Thank you.